pre-capitalist societies are characterized by um, uh, by personal rule. I used the, the example of um, slave and master in, in the afternoon. Bourgeois society is characterized by free and equal citizens, legal free and equal citizens, so that um, bourgeois thinkers use this uh, often as an argument to say we don't have any rule in, in bourgeois society. Economically, we have an impersonal rule, the economic logic demands from the, um, the persons a certain behavior, even if there is not a person who is forcing them, the, the logic of economy is the forcing power. But for the state, this existence of uh, a free and equal citizen has a different uh, consequence. When the citizens are free and equal, then the state with its power, with its uh, power machine, must be a neutral one. It cannot be the, the machine only of one part of the uh, population or of one class. If this was, would happen, then obviously the citizens couldn't be in the same way equal. So the neutrality of the state is a direct consequence of this status of free and equal citizens. But when the state is neutral, then at once uh, the question emerges, uh, can we then speak of class rule? Free citizens, a neutral state, is it uh, how, how this fits together with uh, a ruling class and similar uh, concepts? A lot of Marxists, therefore, try to show that the neutrality of the state is a pure fiction, that uh, the, the state makes a policy in favor of the capitalist class and uh, of course you can find a lot of examples that um, some enterprises, some important capitalists have big influence, in, they, they influence political processes, uh, they influence even the process of um, um, producing a law. But this also is a scandal in bourgeois uh, public. So that the, the state is one-sided uh, is not really a left critic, it is a bourgeois critic. And it is very clear why it is a bourgeois critic. When the uh, state favors one fraction of capital, then this is a disadvantage for other fractions of capital. And of course, uh, they feel damaged and they try to, to prevent their interests by scandalizing the bias of the state. So the neutrality of the state, although it is hurted, it is violated so often, it is also a reality. And it is not only a reality, it is in some respect a necessity for, um, for a proper functioning of a bourgeois state. But nevertheless, this neutrality doesn't exclude the class rule. It just confirms, it is just the proper method to, um, to execute this class rule. Um, and this is very well known even in the times before Marx. Marx in his early writings quotes a French author who uh, a little bit ironically wrote, the state forbids equally to the rich man and to the poor man to sleep under the bridge. So the um, the state totally respects the equality of the citizens. The, um, the law counts for everybody. Everybody who hurts the law um, is, is chased, is uh, accused. But of course, this equal law has very different consequences for persons who are materially very unequal. The rich man doesn't need uh, to sleep under the bridge. The poor uh, man uh, maybe needs this. So when the bourgeois state as a legal state, a state of law, guarantees property, guarantees uh, or secures that uh, 
Treaties may not be violated. Pacta sunt servanda, says an old uh, rule of uh, Roman law already. When the state uh, guarantees this for everybody, the state automatically uh, is in, in favor of the capitalist class because the capitalist class has the big property of uh, company, of, of means of productions, of companies, of machines and so on. The mass of the population has only very small uh, private property. When the state guarantees each form of uh, property, then of course the state guarantees um, the superior superiority of the capitalist class. So, the neutrality of the state, the form of the state as a legal state, is not a fiction. In the contrary, it is necessary for a smooth functioning of a capitalist economy. When this neutrality is violated, also the capitalist process is violated. <laughs>